What is the definition of sepsis? In 2016, a consensus panel got together and redefined what we know as sepsis. And they changed the definition of sepsis to be a life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by dysregulation of the host response to an infection. What differentiates sepsis from other infections? Based on the work of the consensus panel who revised the definition of sepsis and based on the new sepsis guidelines that came out in 2017, they have said that what differentiates sepsis from other infections is the amount of response the host has to an infection. It's unfortunate that sepsis is still killing. Uh, we're still seeing a high mortality rate. I am using the SOFA score. Um, I recently read an article on um, SOFA, and so, you know, sepsis has gone from the 80s, cold sepsis, hot sepsis, you know, then we had SIRS, and then, you know, it's evolved. I think if we could teach the public more how to recognize sepsis, that they wouldn't wait so long to come in because the longer they wait, the higher their lactic acid levels rise and the higher, greater chance that there'll be increased disabilities and death. In healthcare, there's always an area of improvement. Um, so I think we're doing a good job in recognizing it and teaching it to nurses so that nurses are recognizing it as well too. Um, um, just because there are eyes and ears on the floor um, and they really help us out in like letting us know early if a patient's not looking right and helping us really identify sepsis. So I think we're doing a job, but there's always room for improvement. It's really important for all of us to know about sepsis. It's killing so many people. It's underdiagnosed. It's undertreated. So it is much easier retrospectively to go back through and identify when someone's becoming septic. It's identifying it in real time. It's identifying it as the patient presents or observing them over several hours watching them deteriorate. That's being missed. So a lot of lack of repeat vital signs a lack of reassessments. Um, I think still practitioners need to be aware of all the signs and symptoms, of the protocols, of the guidelines. Recently we just had a uh, in-service on the new SOFA you know, protocols and that helped bring a lot of people up to date. Some people were under the impression that you shouldn't give IV fluids when in reality we have to give you know, three liters of IV fluids over quickly. So it's the delay in treatment. Um, that would be the most significant factor. So it's that time to treatment, so time to antibiotics, time to fluid resuscitation, time to uh, pressors, um, time to the aggressive treatment that's going to change the progression. We've developed an internal sepsis alert process, um, so that way when nursing um, identifies patients that meet either severe sepsis or septic shock, they're calling what uh, we'll call a sepsis alert. Um, we've identified that in the emergency department and we just started um, that process on our med surge, med surge floors. I've always had a passion for talking about sepsis and then it came knocking on my door personally when it took away first my sister and then my brother. They both died from sepsis. So I even have that much more passion in teaching people how to take care of septic patient and to decrease mortality.